Let's talk about the 2018 practice guideline on knee cartilage lesions. Download the free PhysioTutors app now and become the best clinician you can be. Cartilage injuries can occur due to acute trauma or repetitive minor trauma. Interestingly, some individuals may not seek treatment because many of these lesions are asymptomatic. However, some experts believe that even small asymptomatic lesions can grow and eventually become painful if left untreated. Patients with cartilage injuries often experience impairments in range of motion, motor control, strength and endurance in the affected limb. This can be due to the injury or the surgical intervention. Overall, most patients, whether they undergo surgery or not, have satisfactory clinical outcomes, although their knee function may be lower compared to the general population. In terms of risk factors, older age and longer time since an ACL injury are predictive of more severe chondral lesions. And the duration from the initial ACL injury is closely associated with the number of chondral lesions. When diagnosing articular cartilage injuries, intermittent knee pain, a history of acute knee trauma, feelings of catching or locking, effusion and joint line tenderness can be helpful. However, Unlike meniscal injuries, this is based on low certainty evidence. Several operative care methods are commonly used, such as arthroscopic lavage and debridement, microfracture, autologous chondral site implantation, and osteochondral autograft transplantation. When it comes to athletes, those who undergo OAT procedures usually report higher knee function, a greater rate of return to sport, and are able to maintain their activity levels better than those who undergo ACI or microfracture procedures. However, it's important to know that the failure rates and the need for reoperation are higher with ACI procedures. Microfracture procedures are suitable for small articular cartilage lesions, especially for low demand sports. For minor lesions in high demand sports, there is an increased risk of failure. Lastly, female sex, older age, higher body mass index, longer symptom duration, previous procedures and surgeries, and lower self-reported knee function are associated with higher failure rates in articular cartilage repair surgeries. Assessing irritability is important for rehabilitation. It aids you in selecting the appropriate frequency, duration, and type of intervention. Professionals in the field of rehab refer to a tissue's ability to resist physical stress as irritability. It probably has something to do with one's physical state, the seriousness of any injury, and the amount of inflammatory activity that's going on. Now it's time to select the right measures. There is a whole lot to consider, such as pain, range of motion, pain during selected activities, joint line tenderness, questionnaires, physical performance measures, etc. Here's a full list. The guideline committee discussed post-operative care starting off with progressive range of motion. At the discretion of the surgeon, the patient can start weight-bearing and return to activity depending on the procedure. Try to reach full weight bearing after six to eight weeks after matrix supported autologous chondrocyte implantation. It is advised to supervise the therapeutic exercises. These consist of range of motion, strength training of the hip and knee muscles, and neuromuscular training. In the early stages, electrical stimulation is advised to increase quadriceps strength and prevent deterioration. It's important to keep the patient goals in mind while rehabbing and to reevaluate appropriately according to component four, the measures. Successful rehab depends on the type of injury and the surgery. When physical impairments are resolved, when there is a high level of self-reported knee function and normal symmetry index, the patient can be discharged to self-management. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something today. If you're interested in knee rehab, make sure to check out our online course on patellofemoral pain and half as fat pad syndrome by Claire Robertson. The links are in the video description. I am Max for Physio Tutors and I will see you in another video. Bye.